Hi guys, let's create a pagination using PHP and MySQL. In my database, I have a table named products. The products table has an ID and a product name column and has a total number of 20 rows. Our application is configured to display four rows per page. The number on the left is the products ID and on the right we have the products name. When the page first loads, we display the first four records. We display a page info text that says showing one of five pages and we highlight the first page pagination button. If I click on the second button, we get the next four records and the page info text is saying showing two of five pages. If I click on the third page, we get the next set of records and so on. Clicking on the next button, we go to the next page and if I click on the previous button, we go to the previous page. If I click on the first button, we go to the first page and the last button sends us to the last page. If I click on the next button, nothing happens because we are on the last page. The same thing goes with the previous button. If I go to the first page and click on previous, again, nothing is happening because there is no previous page. We are going to see how to achieve all those functions using only PHP. Now, enough with the demonstration, so let's code. To code our application, we need three files. We need an index.php file to structure our HTML. We need a script.php file to write the PHP code and a style sheet in which I have already typed the CSS rules. I will not go through the CSS file. I will mention only the important stuff when it's needed. So let's go to the PHP file and start coding. The first thing that I will do is to connect to the database. I'm going to create a new MySQLI object and I will pass in my database connection details. I will set the server name, the MySQL username, the MySQL password and the database name. And I will store the object in a variable named MySQLI. Next, I'm going to write an if statement and I will check the value that the connection error number property returns. If it is not zero, I will echo the connection error and exit the script. Now that we have our database connection set up, let's write a query to fetch the first four rows from the products table. I will use the MySQLI object variable and I will call the query method. And inside quotes, I will select everything from the products table. Next, I will use the limit keyword to set the starting row and the offset. The next thing that I will do is to go to the index file to display those rows and then I will return to explain the limit keyword. But first I will store the returned result set in a variable named result. Now let's go to the index file. I will create a div element with a class of content. Inside the div element I will open PHP tags and I'm going to write a while loop to fetch the result set as an associative array. Inside the loop, I will escape PHP to display each row in a paragraph element. I will echo the ID and the product name. Next, I will go to the top of the page to include the script.php file. Let's see the output in the browser. I will go to the index file, which I have already opened and reload the page. Nice, as expected, we see the first four rows from the products table. Now let's go back to the PHP file to explain the limit keyword. The number zero tells the query from which row to start fetching our products, our records. This is the starting point of our query. And the number four is the offset, which means how many rows from the starting point further down to fetch. Like PHP arrays, database data are also zero based. This means that the first row has an index of zero. Don't be confused with the ID column that every table has and starts with one. If I change this zero to one, the query will skip the first row and will fetch the rows from two to five. Let's see this. I will do a refresh. And here we have our result set, set starting from the second row. That's why we use the number zero as our starting point, so we don't skip the first record. Now let's make the query dynamic. I will create a variable named start and I will set its value to zero. 
and a variable named rows per page and I will set its value to 4 and I will change the limit numbers to the variables that we just created. Now I want to make this tutorial as simple as possible so you can understand the logic behind it. That's why I will go to the index file and I will hard code everything and then step by step we will make everything to work. I will create a div element with a class of page info and inside I will write showing one of five. I know that there will be five pages because we have 20 rows in the database. So if we divide them by four, which is our offset number, we get the number five. Next, I'm going to create another div element with a class of pagination, which will hold our pagination buttons. Our first link will be the go to the first page button. Although we have links, I refer to them sometimes as buttons because we style them to look like buttons in the CSS file. Next we have the previous button. Next I will display the page numbers. For that I will create a div element with a class of page numbers and I will put them all inside. All those div elements are created only for styling purposes. Those elements have nothing to do with the logic. Inside the div element, I will create five links displaying the, the page numbers. Next, I will create the next button. And last, we have the go to the last page button. Now, let's see the output in the browser. I will reload the page. And nice, we have our HTML structure. If I click on the buttons, nothing is happening yet. Now let's go back to the index file to make those buttons to function. And we are going to start with the page info text. I will change the number 5 with a PHP variable named pages. The pages variable will hold the total number of pages, but it doesn't exist yet. So let's go to the PHP file to define it. To find out how many pages I need for my 20 rows in the products table, I have to divide the number of rows by the rows per page. So I will write a query and I will select everything from the products table and I will store the result set in a variable named records. Next I'm going to use the num rows property. This will give me the total number of rows from the table and I will store them in a variable named number of rows. Next I'm going to divide the number of rows by, by the rows per page. But I have, to use this, I have to use the seal function to round up the result to the nearest integer. I'm doing this because even if the last page contains less than 4 rows, we still need a page to display them. Now I will store the result to the pages variable. And so we have the total number of pages. I will leave the first number as it is for now. I will change it later when it makes more sense. Now let's go to the first pagination button. I will send a GET request to the PHP file with a query string that contains the number of the page that we want to display. I'm going to write question mark and after that I will say page number equals 1. This is the first button so we want to display the first page. Easy, right? Now let's go to the last button to display the last page. This time I need the number of the last page. I'm going to say again question mark page number equals and I'm going to use the pages variable which holds the total number of pages. Now I will go to the PHP file to catch the get, the, the get request. I will check if there is a get request. If so, I will take the incoming page number and I will say minus one and I will store the result in a variable named page. Next I will set the query's new starting point. I will use the start variable and I will set it equal to page multiplied by rows per page. If you wonder why we subtract 1 from the incoming page number, remember that we start counting the rows in the database from index 0. That's why we initialize the start variable to 0. So when we say minus 1, we set everything straight. And by multiplying the page number by the rows per page, we get the new starting point. Hope it makes sense. Now let's see if it works. Let's click first on the last button. Nice, we see the last page. 
Now let's click on the first button and we are back in the first page. Nice. Now let's go and code the previous and next buttons. We don't have anything else to do in the PHP file. This is all the code we need. So let's go to the index file and to the previous button. I will go above the previous link and, I will, and I'm going to open PHP tags. Next I will write an if statement that will check if there is a GET request and if the current displayed page number is greater than 1. If this is true, every time we click on the previous button, we are going to send a GET request that will subtract 1 from the current page. This will send us back by one page. Else we display the previous link without the href attribute, so it goes nowhere. The else clause evaluates to true only if we are displaying the first page. Now let's go to the next button. Again, I will open PHP tags and I'm going to check if there is not a GET request. If this is the case, that means that we are on the first page, so I will create a next button that will send us to the second page. Next, I'm going to say else, and I'm going to check the current page number, and if it is greater or equal to the pages variable, I'm going to display the next button without the href attribute, because we are in the last page. Next, I'm going to have an else statement, and inside I will display the next button, and I will say page number equals to the current page number plus one. This will fetch the next set of rows. Let's try it out. I will click repeatedly on the next button until we reach the last page. Nice. Now let's press the previous button until we reach the first page. Nice again. The next and previous buttons are working. Now let's go and code the page numbers. Inside the page numbers div element, I will go open, open PHP tags and I'm going to create a for loop to display the page number buttons. I will set the counter to 1. Next, I will say as long as the counter is less than or equal to the number of the total pages, repeat the loop. And last, I will increment the counter by 1. And inside the loop, in each iteration, I will display a link. I will set the page number query string equal to the counter variable and also I will display the counter variable. And let's remove the hard-coded links. Now let's jump in the browser to see if it works. I have to reload the page and since we are in the first page I will click on the second button. Nice, we see the results from 5 to 8, this is our second page. Here we have page number 3, number 4 and number 5. Very nice, our page buttons are working. Now let's go and fix the page info text. Let's scroll to that section. I will open PHP tags and I will check if there is not a GET request. If this is the case, I will create a variable named page and I will set its value to 1 because we are on the first page. Else, if there is a GET request, I will set the value equal to the current page number and I will use the page variable in our text. Also, I'm going to say pages. Let's bring back the browser in the screen and let's click on the first button. We see one of five pages, two of five, three of five, four of five, and five of five pages. Nice. Our pagination is completed. All the buttons are working, so let's set up the highlighting. To achieve the highlighting on the page numbers, we are going to use PHP and three lines of JavaScript code. Let's see this. I will go above the body element and I will open PHP tags. If there is a GET request, I will create a variable named ID and I will set its value to the current page number. Else I will set the value to 1. And I will create an ID attribute on the body element and I will set its value equal to the value of the ID variable. Now I will scroll down to the end of the page and I will open script tags so I can write JavaScript code. I will use the query selector all method and I will target all the links that are inside the page numbers div element and I will store them in a variable named links.
Next, I will pass as an integer the body ID's element, the body element's ID, and I will store its value to the body ID variable. Next, I will say links, and I will use the body ID variable as index to target the current page. But because arrays in JavaScript are zero based, I will subtract one from the body ID. Next, I will say dot class list dot add, and inside parentheses and inside quotes, I will insert the CSS class that I want to add to the current page number button. In our case, it's the active class that I have in the CSS file and highlights the current page number. And that's it. Let's bring a last time the browser in the screen to check if the highlight works. And it works. Nice. And that's it guys, we reached the end of today's video, I hope you liked it, thanks for watching, subscribe if you like, see you in the next one.